Time to start the show, everybody. Welcome to Roast Mortem. This is the show. My name is Tom. I am Travis. I am your Cody for the evening. And I'm Mike. Wow. It's fucking me up not hearing that intro. It really is. I know, I know. <laughs> Everyone's all mobile now, and we can't just be in one room with the intro. I'm all fucked up. Yeah, I'm in a closet somewhere. We're like a mobile suit Gundam. We get all fused together into one giant mass biomass. That's not Gundam. Gundams never combine, Travis. Whatever! It's all the same shit. Like Power Zoids. Rangers, Gundam. Voltron. Voltron. Megazord. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this a show about Transformers. dorks? Transformers. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, yeah. It's, it's, Resident it's dorks, dorks of Resident history. Dork. Thank you for tuning into Dork Mortem. Yeah. I like <laughs> Where that. We talk about whatever the fuck Cody was just saying. <laughs> Robots, motherfucker. Japanese ones. Uh, how's everyone's week, dogs? It's good. Uh huh. Mike, uh, what'd you do? Uh, yeah. Why is it good? Why are things I, good? I don't know. Explain. Just, uh, just like a lot of free time now just to think about things. I don't know. You just had too much time. It kind of feels like Groundhog Day. It feels Motherfucker, like, we're like three weeks into like this, and now you're only day. thinking? Kind of a little bit. It's like, no, the days are going by are kind of quick, too, which is kind of freaky. I don't like that. What's the date, Mike? What's today's date? Uh, the 419. There you go. Ah, uh, sick! Oh, that means it's My Travis's birthday! birthday. Hey, how yeah! Birthday, Travis. How was your week, Travis? I shaved off my beard, gave myself a stash mash. That is a great birthday present from you to you. You look fantastic. Or from you to the world. I want to keep those prickly germs away from my mouth. I don't want any prickly pears in my mouth. So if I wear a mask now, I could like not worry about beard. All right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm wearing a bandana. I look like an outlaw. It's pretty cool. You, you feel you might get stabbed if you wear oh. the wrong color, Mike. You well, have a you, very stabbable face. <laughs> well, also, you know what? You know who doesn't get any germs? Seventies porn stars. So the more you look like a seventies porn star, Tom, you're good. I'm good now. <laughs> I'm dead. Am I good? Travis? You're dead. Cody's dead. Uh, uh, you kind of like... got maybe like maybe like the lumberjack plumber. As that soon comes as Mike does the mullet, here. he'll be fine. Ooh. I might do that. Mm, yeah. In quarantine. Get yeah, a mullet. We're in quarantine. Do the mullet. Yeah. I enlisted the help of my sister and my girlfriend to cut my hair mm. and uh, didn't go well. It it went. That's I have wrong, a haircut yeah. now. It's not the one I asked for. That's for sure. Uh, fades. Very hard to do, apparently. I can appreciate oh, yeah. the art of barbary now. Any barber that can do a decent fade is worth a tip, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. I always tip. Actually, the several times that. Barbers have fucked up my hair. I still tip them because mm -hmm. when I see them again, I want to yep. be able to guilt them. Yep. <laughs> I came out of a shop once looking like Bozo the Clown, and I still gave the guy two bucks. Yeah, I can't really see what's going I mean, on with look. your hair. It's pretty dark, Tom. What do you, yeah, what do you got going on there? I have a mohawk like, right now because I uh, tried to do this fade thing, and it just wasn't working at all. So and now it's just yeah, a straight you know. mohawk. It's you look good yeah, rocking a rock, mohawk Tom. though. Yeah, yeah, Tom can do but that. But I've done the mohawk before. I'm over it. I'm trying to be more of an adult. I'm going to I'm gonna take advantage of economic climates and apply for a mortgage within the next year. I don't need to, pictures of me in a mohawk when I'm 32. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. It's coming at you. Hey. Oh, whoa. Oh. Wait, what is this? Punk want to get a mortgage? Yeah, give me a down payment. Oh, I got a down payment. I'll give you see your down payment. I'll raise your two yeah. down payments. I got a mohawk. You fucking blindside him. That gets you rates real yeah. fucking low. Yeah. You're like, oh, mohawk. Um, so I, I, I've noticed something that's been happening a lot in this pandemic, uh, an even worse pandemic, mm -hmm. which is the uh, the true arrogance of the boomer with learning technology. And now yep. that they have yep, to use yep. Zoom and um, House Party and all these dumb apps to see each other, because that makes you mm -hmm. feel less alone, the arguing that happens about setting their Zooms upright has been hilarious so it's funny because my dad is very savvy he understands these things but he, it's a job my mom she doesn't really understand these things and she has nine siblings and they're all trying to get in the same zoom meeting and my dad is no, calling each one three. of them trying to make things happen <laughs> so it's been a good time oh wow. my god so I do not envy are you dad. there are you hey guy are you there <laughs> i can see you I can't see me. Like, they don't understand what the noise gate is that stops one person while another person's talking. 
So they think it's oh, just wow. broken. <laughs> it's like, it's obviously not working because we can't be talking at the same exact time. <laughs> I can't no. talk over you, Deborah. Yeah. What is this, Roast Mortem cast? Yes, I'm guilty. Oh, hey. I'm the worst. Oh. That's my week. That's what I was trying to get. I was trying to frame Look my week. Look at week, Tom. like the haircut. Thanks, man. Haircut. Complaints. Bada bing. <laughs> okay. Cody, how's oh. paradise? <laughs> uh, it's all right. I was walking my dog the other day, and uh, out of fucking nowhere, like another unleashed dog comes up, and it like, makes a fucking beeline to my dog. And I'm looking at the dog, and it, just, it looks pretty clean. Like, it, it, it's fucking like had a shower <laughs> in the, like the last month. You know what I mean? But, like, for all I know, maybe it wandered into a fucking car wash. So, like, I'm getting ready to, like, punt the fucking thing if it, like, takes a bite at my dog. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, you know, I was totally alone. And then, like, you know, this this woman comes into the cul-de-sac, you know, pushing her fucking stroller with what I presume is a baby inside. I didn't fucking check. But I'm going to assume it was a baby. And the dog leaves me and goes to this woman, this middle-aged mother with, like, bangs Oof. and 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 it starts you know more or less harassing her we make eye contact and i'm looking at her i'm like what's the likelihood of this bitch complaining to me and i'm like oh it's 100 percent guaranteed and uh-huh. uh, guaranteed 100 <laughs> percent guaranteed and then she's like is this your dog and i just i i shake my head no and i see this woman's soul crush you know what I mean? because she was so pent up and now like she's in a dissatisfactory situation in yeah, which she, can't complain. she cannot complain to anyone. And yeah, like, yeah. I, I see her have like a mild aneurysm, like, oh no. And uh, <laughs> people are the worst. Yeah. Slightly anticlimactic story in that I didn't punt a dog and I didn't have a confrontation with this Karen, but it felt great just watching her, like, oh no, I have a problem that can't be fixed by complaining to someone. Well, also, I like how you mentioned there was probably a baby. That shit was probably like a pug or some shit in that stroller. You seen that? People yeah, strolling yeah. around fucking pugs and like, I don't know. Yeah, yes. Fucking like shih tzus and all that. Uh-huh. Sick, sick people. Uh-huh. All right. Well, let's talk about sick people. Let's get it. Yes, that. please. Yeah. yeah. Who's on the dinky boy? What? Um, Chopping. Travis. Block. So for in honor of Travis's birthday, I decided to change it up a bit. Usually we try oh, yeah. to avoid people who are just downright bad. Not much saving them. But, you know, this time I w- took the opposite approach. And I found one of the worst people I could find. Yeah? Just because but, I wanted Travis but, to feel bad about being 32. You're just you're doing a mean man for me? I'm the least mean man in the world. Y- you are yeah, so you mean. Uh, out. Oh, yeah? I mean, I have a mean side. It's- I thought you were like nineteen, Travis. Uh, he thought I was nineteen, dude. I got. I uh, don't, don't even say that. I was like, I got swag. Like, nah, that's old. Yeah, he doesn't do that. Yeah, I'm. I'm fire, kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's lit, yeah. family. Yeah, thirty-two, more like twenty-three. <laughs> Dyslexic. Yeah, it's a Jordan year, yeah. <laughs> At any rate, in honor of Travis's birthday, we're doing Idi Amin who is Uganda's butcher dictator and the world's meanest smooth brain. Oh, oh nice. Okay. Oh, all right. So we're we're going genocide. We're going we're going right <laughs> to genocide tonight. Fucking oh. God. Get ready everyone. Oh, Get ready. Boy. To fucking start crying cuz we have no ammo to work with. Um, oh. you said you said Uganda? You yes. Said? Uganda. So or is that like in Africa? That's right? East Somewhere Africa. Or East Africa? All right. Yes. 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 So this episode, can we just watch Alex, uh, Uganda's first action hero, instead of listening to you talk about people getting genocide? Do you guys want to do an, a uh, movie commentary about that? About Alex? Yeah, <laughs> yeah the whole movie <laughs> yeah. is on YouTube. Oh, wow. fuck yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, let's plan that. All okay, right. so have you guys ever seen the movie The Last King of Scotland? Yes. No. Yeah, that's with Forrest Whitaker and his eye can't open. Yeah, that's him. So uh-huh. well, I haven't, but that movie is about this guy, Idi Amin oh. Dada Umi. See, I read books and articles about him, and I watch documentaries, so I know the truth. I don't need Hollywood to tell me what to think. No, fuck, yeah, fuck no. those. So Idi Amin was the president of Uganda from 1971 to 1979. This man somehow managed to be massively donkey-headed and also a cruel tyrant at the same time. This man's crimes are no laughing matter. It is estimated that he's responsible for 300,000 to 500,000 people's deaths during his time Ooh. in power. Oh, he's got uh, me beat. 
It's a lot of people. <laughs> but with all this yeah. carnage, this guy can still make you chuckle from time to time. I'll be honest. <laughs> I respect him. <laughs> I this guy's a saint now. Yeah, Wait, are we well, chuckling at him or chuckling with him? Oh no, we're chuckling at him. He's okay, a he's okay. a he's a buffoon. He's a buffoon. <laughs> he's no jester. He's not in on the joke. <laughs> what was his full name again? Idi Amin Dada Umi. Dada Umi. Is that Swahili? Dada Umi. It's a Swahili name. Um, okay. Scatman. So anyway, he's not in on the joke, and his. All right, we'll get into it. Let's do it now. So he was born. Yeah. His exact birth date, totally unknown. It's somewhere between 1923 and 28. He claimed it was 28, probably because he wanted to seem younger, but it's not important. He was born in Kobako, the British-ruled West Nile district of Uganda. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Is that where West Nile virus is from? Probably. That mosquito that came over and now it fucks up Long Island sometimes? How dare you put the name of the country into the virus? Who yeah. would do that? Yeah, what sick person would, would take what? a region and blame a virus on that? Why <laughs> yeah. would you do this to us, Travis? <laughs> well, I'm yeah, just Travis saying, I just fun. remember as a kid going outside playing on the lawn and then a fucking plane with orange soda just sprays all over the place. Kill all them mosquitoes. Did you catch it in your mouth? Yeah. You make a like, wish when that free happens. Free orange soda. Wait, you say you cover yourself in orange soda? Yes. To, to ward away mosquitoes? He would have bees really? around him. And the mosquitoes yeah, the were bee. afraid of bees. Yeah, warrior uh-huh. bees. They would just be surrounding me in like one solid... You couldn't even <laughs> punch through the bees. That's how thick it was. Oh, it's your secret weapon? Yeah, that's science, dude. Right. I, I, I am pretty sure that besides cotton, uh, West Nile virus is Uganda's biggest export. Mm. Uh, his mother Beautiful. was a Lugbara Christian, and his father was a Kakwa Muslim from different tribes, both considered Nubian, though. Nubian people originated from South Sudan, a bit of Egypt. This whole region was just called Nubians. This is before the, the Westerners put the lines down mm-hmm. uh, and yeah. made countries. So the tribes kind of go through borders. Oh, that's okay. the same thing as the Middle East, how though you could meet someone from Iraq and they say they're Persian. Yeah, It's yeah. like Nubia used to be an empire, but then the Europeans were like, nah, this is obvious. See this river here? That's going to be a new country because that side's got shrimp on one side. Other side's got frogs. I know which side I want. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm on frog side. That sounds like really? Louisiana, yeah. Travis. Yeah. I want to get bit by radioactive shrimp and be tastier. <laughs> this all checks Logic out. Logic of sound. Yeah. I'm not a doctor. He was of the Swahili speaking Kakwa tribe. Some pretty brutal fucks who like to fuck shit up. And not in that Dolomite sense, like terrible rape and murder. Mm. During Uganda's British occupation, most of the education resources were concentrated in the south, while most of the people in the north were drawn in to create the police and the military forces for the King's African Rifles. Ah. All right. Okay. Uh, he had very little education growing up, as was par for the course in northern Uganda. His parents didn't like each other all that much, so they divorced when Itty was young. And Itty traveled from army barrack to army barrack with his mother, tending fields as they moved. Wait, so she's like looking for a new policeman to marry? Looking for a new union to join? Well, something like that. She didn't have a man, so she's oh, jumping okay. around. She was also a herb specialist. I know you could say uh, herb, uh, but huh? she was a herb specialist. How so? Some weirdos might even call that a, a witch doctor. But Ooh. So, oh. so she was known, probably not across all Africa, but in these local areas she was stopping as someone who knew how to make, you know, make what, what is those, those sage candles that ladies do? I don't know. Ah. Uh, like bomb baths and shit like that? I what? don't know what that means, Mike. What's bath a bomb bombs? bath? Oh, no, yeah, bath bombs, yeah, sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were no. talking about some drug paraphernalia. Yeah. Also, oh, no. bomb bath sounds like something an African person would say, bomba. <laughs> well, yeah. bomba clot. I was thinking that, too. <laughs> right. So she's like, she's this witch doctor, right? So mom's a witch right. doctor, but can't really confirm that 100%, but pretty much everyone called her a witch doctor, so we'll go with it. Um, I had a feeling that all divorced women of 1940s Uganda were called witch doctors anyway. (laughs) 
Uh, would people see the witch doctor and that she would tell them what to do? Bum bum bum. Oh, eh, ha ha ha. Swear, squatty, gritty, wing, bing, hustle. Squat, 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 ding, ding, dong. When you go to a walk in clinic around here in the States and they see you for like three seconds, they're like, oh, I got a cough. Goodbye. If they just did yeah. a 15 second jingle instead of a 30 second visit, <laughs> you'd probably feel a lot more gratified. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right? I want some like, flavor like, when I visit the doctor. Yeah, right. Yeah, twenty four dollar copay, man. It's just <laughs> at, at <laughs> least give me like a, a, a dusting of parsley, please. Yeah. No, yeah. Next time I go to the doctor, I'm like, you got to work for that twenty five dollar copay. <laughs> but you've already paid it. I don't you care. Wait longer than the visit. All right then. Well, uh, Travis, you smell like you have been drinking beer for the last 30 years of your life, and I noticed you're Shut only up! 32. Shut up! Just do a little so. tiny dance! Do a little tiny dance! That's all I want you to do! Charleston, I'll put my easy. shirt back on if I if you do a little tiny dance! <laughs> no. <laughs> so in his teens, Itty went to school for two years to learn how to speak English like a six-year-old. Oh, sick. He also, cool. in general, wasn't that smart of a guy. Basically, he was a six-foot-four, 250-pound six-year-old. Yeah, cool. Ah, you know, you're like, well, this guy's never going to be president. They're wrong. Yeah. Mm. Well, you I mean, the haters wrong. I, I mean, I, I'm going to say sloth for president 2020. He's dead now. He's got dude. my vote. He is. Fuck. Yeah. Sloths. Sloths. Ghost for president. That movie's 30 yeah. years old, and he was like already dying. Oh. <laughs> they filmed that right around the corner from here. Oh yeah. Yeah. Been on the Goonies? Been there. Yeah, wow. Goonies. Yeah. In 1946, he enlisted in the British military, a.k.a. the King's Rifles, like I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was just after a little stint he did in a hotel working as a hat boy. Oh. What kind of job is that? That's where yeah, you take rich people's what? hats and put them on a rack. Wow, that's a good job. Yeah. <laughs> Probably get good tips. Yeah. Yeah, man. Sometimes you get to keep the hat when they leave drunk. Ooh. You know, you get a Ooh. Man of many hats. Uh, his first position in the King's African Rifles was a cook, where he was constantly fucking around. Ah. <laughs> Not well liked by his peers, but for some reason the officers thought he was funny. Uh, but when the <laughs> army was really looking to expand, they enlisted Itty, mostly because of, that, because of his size. He was a lummox type. And officers yeah. of the King's African Rifles loved a good lummox. Was They're valuable. Was... You need oh, them. Oh, 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 we're going to play a rugby, rugby, get in a scrum, Eddie. Get a scrum the scrum, <laughs> scrum me, scrum the, scrum the boys. I like the concept of a firefight is so new to, like, these rifles. What, what, what's the name of the... Uh, the King's African Rifles. Yeah, I, I like how like the concept of firefighting is seemingly new to them to the point where like get the big guy to be a soldier. Even though we're using guns, get the big guy. He's easier to hit, please. You know, England moves in. They do their thing. We'll try to get the feeble-minded natives to help us, and then we'll put them in the army, but we'll make sure they can't get very high in the army. I know. We'll give them their own army, and the highest rank is corporal. Oh, that's <laughs> nice of them. <laughs> You did everything right. You're still just a fucking weenie. Well, Cody, um, you're saying like you're also you're saying like in 1920 or 1930s, I guess now uh, that he it was like oh they want to have a big guy. He's like a better target. Like dude, you can still today armies are like dude. You see that pure corn fed Minnesotan Marine boy? He's the yeah. largest man to ever squeeze through a tank. We had to loop him up in there, <laughs> but he, we make America proud. The, yeah, yeah but he looks scary. The, yeah, yeah but no. the overhead, the Soldiers, overhead on extra large uniforms is uh, yeah. like ridiculous. Armies love big boys, big chunky. Well, I don't not know chunky why. boys. Good for the brick spreads. boys. <laughs> I just want a platoon of midgets, a platoon of fucking sniper grenadier midgets. They're That's smart, somewhere. Cody. They'll hide in trees and come out of air ducts, and no one's gonna see them coming. Honestly, that's not a bad idea. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Very. They could be very sneaky. I know I'm. I know I'm being silly when Mike fucking agrees with me. So. <laughs> <laughs> One day maybe we'll go over Vietnam and then uh, we'll get to talk about the tiny midgets that sneak around in holes. I think they're just short people. Anyway. <laughs> so these officers were absolutely right to love him. 
uh, because he's a giant and he's an idiot. So they're just like, hey, go, you know, very important mission for you, idiot. You got to go scrape the gum off of the, the bottom of my shoes. And he'd be like, uh, <laughs> okay, I do this. Promoted. Uh, he was awarded all kinds of accolades for his minor military achievements. <laughs> You did a great job scraping my gum off my shoes. <laughs> Here's a can of creamed corn. Here's a participation. Oh, yeah! <laughs> yeah! During this time, he was also Uganda's light heavyweight boxing champion. Because I guess they oh, let some of these army okay. guys fuck around in the ring. And he was that, huge. See, he's big. That's where being, yeah. And he could throw a fucking punch. That makes sense for, to be a big boy. If you're actually punching a fucker. Yeah, Cody, right? are you talking about big boys? I can do just the same amount of things as you do, Cody. I can do just the same amount of things. What, you trying to discriminate against my people? Just a little. Cody. At least he's honest, Travis. You know what, Cody? At least you're being honest, but I'm just, just I challenge you to eating more pepperoni than me. You're going to lose. <laughs> I can do just the amount, same amount of things that you do. The same amount of things. Not the same things, <laughs> but like, you know... Yeah. If, Co- if yeah. Cody can shoot a three pointer, then Travis can lay down. <laughs> that, yeah. That's one for one. <laughs> You're just discrimination. Do a yeah. I can do a cartwheel, and Travis is like, I can count my legs. <laughs> um, right. Uh, you ever seen a big boy rolling down a hill? It's a scary thing. <laughs> yeah. It is scary. You're right. There's an uh, Indiana Jones. I've seen a few that. times. <laughs> so anyway, Eddie was a uh, dedicated soldier, and he was very proficient in some things. Definitely not all things. Because of his size, demeanor, and dedication, his commanding officers pushed him through the ranks. And in 1962, he was sent to England to take a commanding officer's training course. Mm, in 1964, cool. he came back failing this course miserably. Uh, uh. He couldn't finish the written exam. Oh, he's an idiot? Oh. Yeah, he, you can pretty much say that every five minutes, Mike, on the rest of this episode. He, he's an idiot. This guy's really okay. dumb. Sounds like an idiot. Yeah. He probably got a good taste of the music, though, when he was over there. Like the you know, the yard birds, the yobbles, or the grobbles, or the beebles, or, or Danny's, Danny's men. Yeah, Whoa. Danny and his men. <laughs> what is <laughs> happening? The Warlock Wizard Boys. Dun, 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 dun. We are the law blah blah all blah 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 We come from we, we come from Fall Squat. We come from Fall Squat Shire and we live in the woods. We are the Fall Squat Shire boys. Yeah, Travis has just been having a stroke for the last two <laughs> minutes and we've been giggling at him. Call an ambulance! <laughs> As a corporal, he showed all kinds of signs of being a sick fuck. The battles that Itty experienced during the Mau Mau uprising, we saw some questionable acts that he was pulling off there. So, just a little background here. This was a large group of native Kenyans called the Kenya Land and Freedom Army, or the Mau Mau. And they were trying Hmm. to expel the British occupiers from Kenya. So the Ugandan forces were brought in to fight on behalf of the crown. Idi Amin had gone from Lummox to Psycho in a very short amount of time. Wow. He yeah. had committed some pretty heinous war crimes, like personally killing several men of the Turkana tribe and cutting off the dicks of some of the Karamajong tribesmen. Ooh, that must hurt. Totally unwarranted, yeah. as both tribes were not involved with the Kenya Land and Freedom Army. Wow. So they're just third parties. They didn't even know it was happening. They were just men or and women and children just, like showed up. just living in dirt. And this guy comes over and cuts their penises off. Oh, my God. Um, These crimes were reported to Prime Minister of Uganda, Milton Aboti. But they seemed to go unpunished as Aboti saw Edie as a useful political asset. Uh He was well-liked. A lot of these crimes were on the DL for a while. Wow, okay. I was saying, uh, people really like a big boy. They like him big. They like him. They like a big boy. They like <laughs> like a big large. Pillow, you know? But listen up, if you're a big boy out there with great power, great bigness comes great responsibilities. So this is true. Yeah. So sh- like diabetes, diabetes big is a show. responsibility. Yeah, Cody, don't even talk about my arch nem, my kryptonite, diabetes. <laughs> That's a very sore <laughs> subject for my people. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, where's well, the soreness? Just, I can't. Yeah, I can't feel my legs anymore. They just tingle, tingle a lot. All right, well, let's talk about something more sugary then. 
Yeah. It turns yeah. out that Abode's decision to cover up for Edie's crimes, we're going to come back and bite him in the ass pretty bad. Oh. So not only was Edie a murdering grimace, he was a corrupt mm-hmm. grimace. Oh. Is and, that redundant? Well, murdering and corruption, those are two different things. I'm, uh, I was talking about murderous and grimace, but fine, that's fine. All right. Yes, <laughs> good point. Um, in 1966, in over the course of a month, he deposited 20,000 pounds into his bank account. Now, that doesn't sound a lot right now. but Yeah, he's a big boy. Gotta remember how poor Uganda is. Yeah. Oh, right. And this okay. was basically the equivalent of a top-ranking officer salary for an entire decade. Wow. Yeah, and That's also... a lot of money. Like, 20,000 pounds is nothing to shake your dick at nowadays, either. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's not, but if I was to put that in my bank account, I just had a good month doing freelance. Yeah. But this is now 1967 or 66, so that would be the equivalent of, like, buying a houseboat. Yeah, a houseboat where it's just out of nowhere, and there's not even water there that you could put a houseboat in. There's a Nile, but you wouldn't put it there because it would just disappear. Well, there's too many mosquitoes. It's a one-way street, that fucking Nile. Yeah, but for some reason, Uganda, being a fucked country doesn't look into anything. So not only were the charges dropped against this corruption charge, but they didn't even look to see where the money came from. So we don't know anything about this. It was just 20,000 pounds, shows up in Edie's thing, a boat he's like, oh, (laughs) you're funny. Got it. (laughs) Hey. All right. So if you couldn't tell, Uganda's a hot fucking mess in the 60s. Yeah. The previous Clearly. mentioned Milton Abode was prime minister, and his goal was to unite Uganda in a Western fashion, i.e. make the tribes unite under a government. But this wasn't such a great idea, because ripping away someone's lifestyle for the sake of it is... It's stupid. <laughs> yeah. Since he was a lawyer from a small, small, baby Mario-sized tribe called Langi. He appointed the leader of the largest tribe in Uganda, called the Buganda tribe, to be president. Buganda, Uganda, was... I get it. Buganda, Uganda. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> this is my booze, Ganda, and this is your Ganda. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. All right. That's exactly how it was named. Yes. Are you, are you putting down Travis? I know. Well, I'm just explaining it for you, <laughs> yeah, Mike. Yeah, I needed that. Right, so, I was trying to make it stick. Thank you. Thank you. Stick to the smooth. So the appointed president was named King Freddy. So now we have a king as president. And this will only get a little more confusing. <laughs> Good. The okay. Buganda tribe considered themselves the elite race. And were overall pretty clicky. That's an African joke. I, I see what you did there and I appreciate it. The rest of the tribes in Uganda were less psyched about this. In response, a boti, after... Extending this presidency to the old King Freddy limits the power of King Freddy out of nowhere, and the Buganda tribesmen started throwing hissy fits. Uh-oh. Um, hey Tom, you mentioned something very important before. I just wanted to make sure I heard it right. Do you say that they were the like master race there? So this yes, is like... they were the white supremacists. <laughs> Africa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For some reason, they okay. thought that their skin, their specific shade, was better than the other ones. Yeah. Dude, really? racism <laughs> yeah, that is happens, so Mike. dumb. Wow. You're always better oh, than someone. Man. That's how the world works. It's just what that metric is changes throughout history. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but also, like, I don't know, like these tribes, right? They're all in one country. They've existed here for, like, centuries, right? Like, that's like, mm-hmm. that's like Mike, you're a sub-race for me because you're from the south shore of Long Island. <laughs> well, yeah. that, you say that like it's a joke. Yeah, well, yeah. I know. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's going on? <laughs> like, yeah, well, I, you know, Cody's unfazed here with that, that statement. I know you guys got more, you guys got more like uh, New York City policemen and more fucking 7 Elevens and shit down there. Well, yeah, I got a 7 Eleven. Yeah. Every corner. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Something to be proud of? That's what I'm saying. Well, it's not racism then, it's just elitism. No, it's point. but it is tribalism. Oh, it's sure. definitely that, tribalism. That, that's a better yeah. word because like blue and red aren't races, which is why. But racism yeah. is just tribalism based on a skin. Yeah, that's oh, all. And yeah. breed, like inherently, it's, it's, it's the same retardation that keeps people from like you know yeah. that keeps people like David Duke going. I don't. 
I'm going to sound like such a fucking millennial because like I can't remember the people, but I definitely watched a documentary where like an entire like people were wiped out by another people in Africa. And the only difference between these two parties was one like the upper caste party owned more than 10 cows. Oh, the Hitsi and the Tutsis. The, yeah, the, that, the, those the Tutsis. Rwanda Thank you. The Tutsis, like yeah. yeah, it was pretty much that. And like the only difference between these two groups of people is some people own nine cows, and but the people that own 10 cows wanted the people that owned only nine cows to die horribly. Oh my God. <laughs> Anyway, so the Begonded tribes people, they start throwing hissy fits because King Freddy's getting his power docked. And they're like, start thinking about how to overthrow a Boaty and his whole nerd mm. ship. So, okay. a Boaty is feeling this heat, so his pussy ass decides to bring in the newly appointed deputy commander of the army, Idi Amin. Our guy. Hey. Hey, what's up? Fucking oh. Big fucking hunk of Retardation. I don't know. I shouldn't say that word. <laughs> I like how you were looking for the right word uh, and you went with yeah. retardation. That is the right word, though. <laughs> it, you got yeah. it right. You just had to grind the gears a little bit to get there. Yeah. And I appreciate you for putting in the fucking effort, Mike. <laughs> Itty did what Itty does best, which is strap a massive turret gun on the top of his personal Jeep and blast yeah. the president's palace into tiny bits. Oh, my God. <laughs> King Freddy had heard of the plans for the attack just before it happened and fled to England, where he spent the rest of his days boiling water for tea and eating sausage roll. Not <laughs> I also, I love when you strap life. a giant machine gun to a pickup truck. It becomes something called a technical. Yeah. Like. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. a technical in military terms is literally a pickup truck with a big fucking gun on it. Oh, cool. I don't know, yeah, I just think it's funny. Kind of Technical. You. Technically, this is a big pickup truck with a gun. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Roger, Roger. That's Econ <laughs> Roger. Roger, we have a technical coming. Technical. Uh. Yeah, what up, y'all? Got my big up pickup truck. <laughs> <laughs> Tonka tough. It's got a giant I'll monster energy true. decal on the back of it. Oh, it's ready to <laughs> fuck us up. Is it right, dragging so a dead body behind it? No, that's just giant truck nuts. <laughs> oh, it beat me to it. <laughs> anyway, after chasing King Freddy off, Amin became a Boaty's right-hand man. Mm. But Amin was really a uh, backstabbing jerk who wanted more power. In January 1971, when a Boaty went to Singapore for a conference, Amin used this opportunity to stage a coup to take over the prime minister position for himself. He's gone. Yeah, and quickly. <laughs> get in there. <laughs> <laughs> just take over all his dude's shit when he's not there. He's going to like just hang out in his palace or house or whatever it is or Yeah, because this yeah, is man. this is like this is what happens when you have tribesmen doing western government. Yeah, this and also not, like they're not pro- they're not programmed to do shit like I'm not saying programmed, but they're not like used to this idea of just like all right, well, uh, Eddie, if you want this so bad, why don't you run against him in the democracy that yeah, currently they exists? Yeah, by force. They, yeah, they, also- they got democracy going for them in 1962 when the British finally left and gave them their independence. Mm-hmm. And no democracy has ever been used in that country. Yeah. Because people just yeah. either cha- keep changing the rules or keep fucking each other over and assassinating people. It's just, it, 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 it's honestly been set on a pretty bad path because. The British were there, and then they they just decided to leave because they didn't have anything to actually left, yeah. And, and they tried to do Western government, and it's just a bad way to start, I suppose. It's not for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Kabodi didn't call fives. Right. So he tries to take the prime minister position for himself. Amin's right. first word words as president over the radio were, I am not a politician, but a professional soldier. I am therefore a man with few words. Now, this was the first lie he ever told. Because wow. this guy wouldn't shut the fuck up. He had many <laughs> words, and they were all pretty I dumb. I was constantly bragging. He, yeah, this, limited vocabulary, so it was the same words a bunch of times over and over again. But he had many words. Yeah, well, he thinks of he now officially thinks of himself as a Western ruler. Um, oh, okay, w- with the with the nuance of being a politician and having that snake tongue and being able to kind of weasel your way around. He doesn't have that tool at all. Mm-hmm. He doesn't mm-hmm. even know it's how like certain delusional. words in English are pronounced. 
Like, I get that it's his second language, but now he's the president and prime minister at the same time. Ah, uh, jeez. Uh, if you watch, if you can no watch all kinds of interviews with him online. So anyway, the, the people of Uganda welcome this coup as they grew tired of Abote's policies and strange haircut. I forgot to mention he had a strange haircut. Right. Flock of seagulls? What made it strange? More like if Frederick Douglass painted his hair on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wow. got you. So I'm in promised his country a fair democracy. Um, the international community particularly Britain, was entirely in favor of this regime change. New guy, this is going to be great. It's cool. We can probably feed him some some ideas, and then you know he can barely speak English, barely put a sentence together, so we can probably push him in prime, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, this is how Britain's Stooge. thinking, because they, the they still have stock there. The country is free from mm. them, but there's still a lot of British people there. Yeah, I mean, he's been to England. He's seen the charms of the Yavos and the Crockles, and he's... He's seen the, what? the the large baked bean cans that come in spotted waves. Spotted dick. Spotted dick. He's the seen all chips. these great things. Fished the fished chips. I like yeah. curry. Bangas and mush. <laughs> all right. Immediately in month one of Edie's whole presidential prime minister thing. Starts a genocide against all the tribes that supported Aboti during his presidency. Wow. No, oh Edie, what's wrong? Why are you ruining all the good big boy status? I'm from a tribe where we kill people we don't agree with. So, ha ha. Yeah. So, uh, just, just a quick word of warning. Yeah. This is going to be a rough episode. So, happy birthday, Travis. Happy birthday, Travis. Woo! Hey, party, yeah, have Travis. fun. Yeah. Party, so, have fun. Hey, hey, it's time. Shut up. Birthday party, time. have fun. Party, have fun. I'm having <laughs> a good time. 32 years young. Tom, you don't have to keep talking at all anymore. I'm having a good time. There's no way this episode is going to be a down <laughs> Anyway, he'd send henchmen to universities to drag out women with certain tr- from certain tribes. Uh, they'd drag them out of their rooms in the middle of the night, never to be seen again. Slaughtered. Mm. Oh, my God. Spooks. <sighs> in March 1972, Edie announced to his army that he would be restructuring their military. And he asked 36 of his most prominent army officers to report to the make-and-die prison in Kampala. Kampala is Uganda's capital. It's going to come up a few more times. Uh, oh, no. He he was going to okay. debrief them, give it a little, you know, give them some security training. Hey, everyone, come on in. We got okay. some new rules to go through. Some, some, some tricks and tips. Yeah. You uh, know? No girls allowed. Right. <laughs> when they arrive, he ordered them all into cells, and they were tortured to death with bayonets and knives. How about that? Oh, I've never had a it's Monday meet. I've never had a Monday meeting like that at work. Mm. All right, let's talk about like what we're going to do oh, this week, tortured. guys. All right, tortured. Yeah, they. Sh- why are they doing that? I mean, this is just the the tip of the cock, Berg. You get rid of your competition, Mike. That's what's going on. Yeah, but right. why got to torture them? At least just kill them, get over with. Oh, no, no. Edie was into torture. He was sicko? He liked the slow shit. Mm. Oh, Jesus He preferred Christ. slow. He didn't want anyone shot in the head ever. He, oh. he wanted people shot Fuck. in places they would bleed out. For yeah, hours. He'd put you in a crock pot, Mike. And oh just my god! Come oh, back to you the next day, yeah, like Ooh. point five. Yeah, nice and tender. So the <sighs> yeah, that's what he wanted. He wanted a tender boy, and actually, we're going to talk about that <laughs> in a bit too. Um, the former army chief of staff, Brigadier Solomon Hussein, was a foe of Amin back before Amin had all this power. He was taken to prison and beaten to death with rifle butts, and then decapitated. And to make this a little more fun, Amin took his head home and kept it in his freezer. And would take it out hmm. during dinner parties to show guests. What would we do? We do like a sock puppet thing with it or something? Hey, we just oh. take it out and fl- throw it Check around. It out, I mean, guys. he would host these parties that were terrifying. Um, oh if you were God. invited, well, you had to go. I'd be terrified. Yeah, because there's like, you know, there's body parts in the kitchen. Yeah, it probably smells like shit. If you shake his hand weird, he'll push you down the stairs and have you stabbed to death. You'd have to go if you were invited. <laughs> Is that real? Were you joking along. there, Tom? No, sorry, no. Tom. Were you joking there? 
he'd push you down the stairs and no. Then well, the push down the okay. stairs is more of a roast mortem way of saying. Oh no, getting, okay, I wasn't sure dumped. if it was like I, if there was an, a, a case of someone that's like, you do not shake my hand properly. Push, stab. I, had I men wouldn't hiding be surprised. On the stairs to stab you. Stabbing yeah, I was you thinking like they're on the, the like stairs. there's four guys in the stairway landing with just knives sharpening it, waiting to stab anything that falls down. Uh, oh, here comes one. Oh shit. Honestly, that would be better than some of the things that I'm about to describe. Happy birthday, Travis. Happy birthday. Um, so, yeah, he would have these parties, and there's there's actually footage of this. It's kind of creepy. Yeah. Um, he liked playing accordion, but he wasn't very good at it, and he would have people clap along to him playing, <laughs> and be, you'd see him smile, and everyone's just like, please don't kill my life. You're so good. <laughs> yeah, you're the best one. It, it's You're right. It's, it's sad. Like was he creepy a, shit. Yeah. Was he a regular old Weird Al doing all those parody tunes? Ugandan parody nah. tunes? I don't even know what he was playing because it's all B-roll shit. Mm. <laughs> you know, back, back then, not everyone's home camcorder had sound to it. That's true. So he liked to play terrible tricks on his officers who were oh uh, former Abode supporters. Like nah. this one time he asked them all to line up in a military parade to salute a tank for some reason. I think this practice is fairly common wrong. amongst dictators in general, where they just want their officers to salute the dumb shit they just bought. Like, I know that <laughs> happens in North Korea all the time. Kim Jong-un gets a new tank. Like, everyone's got to go outside and be like... Not even, like, a fucking tank. Like, I, j- like, I got a new handgun. And then you have 36,000 Korean soldiers saluting <laughs> just like a fucking revolver on a pedestal. <laughs> Kim Jong-un, like, on one of those hoverboards... Like, <laughs> looking at my new toy. I'm assuming that's how he speaks in English. So he lines up these these guys, and they're all doing the salute, and it's like, hey, check out my new my new truck, hombres. The oh, officers were in the middle of saluting the tank when I'm um, in order the tank to run them all over. What? what? The fuck? Yeah, I'd hate to be there. I'd be like, I'm leaving this place. You Uganda, is nuts. Uganda's hell on earth. Uh, wait, so wait, why did he have them run over just because? Just like, Oh, I'm going to play a joke on Just you. do it. Like I said, when he's a six-year-old, he's a six-year-old in his head. Right. He's like, oh, you don't like me? You're dead. Y- you know that Twilight Zone episode where the-, the little kid is able to make bad things happen to people who don't like him? Uh-huh. Right. Like, he thinks he has that power where he can judge who likes him or not and will just kill them. Is he, like, the paranoid? Is he thinking shit. that he's going to get, like, cooed? Or is it just more yeah. like... Oh! oh he oh, He's paranoid. <laughs> it's all paranoia. Okay. He he is he is driven by paranoia. So he runs over all these guys and the few of them that <laughs> lived he he treated them as target practice. Oh, it's mm-hmm. even worse. Yeah. In 5 months, Amin had killed most of the trained professional officers in his army and somehow he what hid this fuck? all from the public, telling them that he did in fact execute some of the officers, but only a few. And it after is. being court-martialed and fairly tried. Oh. It was the first, like, six months he was just doing army people and then these various tribes in the cover of night. So yeah. the Union no, people didn't down. know it was as bad as it was. All right. I mean, I get I get the fact that an army, like, if you get to a certain point in the military, you got to watch out because that person might coo you. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, start a coup. Yeah, okay. But, like, why are you going to whack all your officers? Like, those yeah. are the guys that are, like, supposed to be, like, Helping you running out. your troops. I, I right? am like, so glad you asked that, because his solution to that was to go to his own tribe and hire a bunch of people who made pots for a living to come be his <laughs> high officers and his, his oh, generals. Great. So now his commanding forces are people who have never even seen a car before. Cool. I've made jars for 75 years. I am now the lieutenant general of, of Uganda. Here's your bazooka, sir. Yeah. Why did he, do, why did he make them his officers? He just had no one else around. To, he killed everyone else well, that Mike, was qualified. I, I, I said this a couple times already. This is like what tribe people do. When you are oh, okay. when you have like a an allegiance to your tribe in the back of your mind, like those are obviously the best people because everyone the, yeah, tri- like, the tribe has told me that everyone tribe. else fucking sucks. So I'm just going to hire okay. the best people. And the best He's people have to, like, you know, uh, never never had a pair of shoes and walk yeah. around in cow shit all day, but I'm going to put them in charge of 500 other people. He's got a very yeah, I mean, and- version of us versus, like, what us is and what them is. Yeah. That's a good way, is different. Right. 
Like, you're not going to see an NYPD officer at a Suffolk County block party. They're both terrible people, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So throughout 1971, he keeps the, the killing on the down low, like I just said. But the one alarming thing was that Kampala was pretty much off limits for traffic. They close it down. No foreigners. Um, any Uganda citizen who wanted to come there needed to be screened heavily. And most of the time, they would just get rejected anyway. Really? Yeah. Shit. Edie thinks he is a great leader, and he thinks Uh that the world thinks very highly of him. Yeah. So he takes his first international trip. Oh, where'd he go? Well, first stop, he goes to Israel. Oh, I thought you were going to say sandals. (laughs) Sandals Israel's got a sandal. Yeah, Israel's got to have (laughs) at least one sandals. Yeah, sandals Tel Aviv. Um, the reason he went to Israel is because yeah. I forgot to mention this before. After his his British training, he was sent to Israel for the army because they are excellent at training paratroopers. So, sure, he actually failed the paratrooping class in in Israel <laughs> and years survived. before his presidency. But the Uganda army was so shoddy, they just gave him the certification when he got back home. So anyway, he oh, goes there because he wants. Ribbon. He failed how to f- jump out of a plane and pull a string. I think he was too big. Yeah, he's a big boy. <laughs> Falling too quick. Probably took down the <laughs> plane. not how gravity works, Mike. <laughs> 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 he takes his first international trip. First stop, Israel, where he talks to their prime minister, Golda Meir, about purchasing weapons and getting his new army trained by Israeli forces. No deal was struck over the weapons, and I'm in left with only a vague agreement to help train his army. Ah, vague agreement. Then he shot over to his old pals in jolly old England to talk shop. Mm. They learned of his arrival just before he landed via Ugandan pilot radioing for clearance at Heathrow Airport. Oh. Ah. Not a lot of uh, time to... Get that gov. You know... Roll out the red carpet. Yeah, get those biscuits ready or whatever the fuck they do. They take at least 20. Good old Queenie is like, yeah, oh, Queenie's there? Yeah, Queenie is like, well, he's an international leader. I got to have him over for brunch. And he's a big boy, and Queenie loves big boys. Make the full English now. He's a hungry boy. He's a big boy. So, so yeah, the queen invites this big dope over for small sandwiches and yeah. to ask about First his mistake. plans during his time in England. He told her... <laughs> He was simply shopping for size 14 shoes. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like Edie was trying to get that queen puss. Mm. We know he's oh, there for other it's things. It's hard to find where he lives. I got size 14 shoes. You know what they say about big boys with size 14 shoes? They got small teeth. <laughs> so then he went to the prime minister, Edward Heath, to ask about gun and airplane supply. He left England empty-handed as he didn't have any money to buy guns or airplanes yeah. or even size 14 shoes. What the fuck is going on right now? I, I bet he got a sauce I bet he got a sausage roll cuz that's only like 89 pence. I'm sure he did too. He probably went to Greg's got himself a sausage roll. Right. right. But I now he's airplane. back home and he's like you know, my allies aren't my allies and his allies are like who are you? Yeah. Him asking, like, Great Britain powers for weapons is kind of like going down to your local precinct and asking where you could buy weed. It's not going to happen, and they'll probably keep an eye on you. Yeah, Unless you're in California. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Unless it's CBD, you know. So anyway, uh, he left left there embarrassed, and he should be embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the right thing to do. Yeah. So I tell you about these international trips and how oh. he didn't have any money to buy anything and they probably wouldn't sell it to him anyway. But this is the beginning of illustrating that Edie has no idea what money even is. Money <laughs> or protocol or just anything, really. Yeah. Didn't think about that one. He's a I do what I want when I want and fuck, fuck the haters type of um, <laughs> behemoth. Yes, exactly. Like he, doesn't have his own, he doesn't have his own type of currency that translates over into like... They have Europe's system. They have uh, Ugandan currency. I forget exactly what it's called, but they also use they use USD and pounds as well. 
But it, it, it seems like Idi Amin's like mind currency is his willingness to kill you. And that just oh. doesn't translate over to other countries. No. Yeah. yeah. You know, if, so, if, if, if you go to a diner and you order something yeah. and then yeah. you get the bill, and instead of paying it, you kill someone, you still didn't pay the bill. That is true. Yeah. So that food is worth yeah, one human life. <laughs> right. So in 1971, <laughs> this dude takes power. Right? Uganda okay. was East Africa's most lucrative country at the time. I mean, not a lot of Africa is that lucrative, except for places like Libya that have gold and a few other exceptions. But overall, they weren't doing bad compared to the other countries of the region, like Tanzania and Sudan, those places, and, and Kenya, those places were much poorer. Oh, what was their big export? Was it diamonds or some shit? Or? It was actually cotton. Oh. Ah. Most of the diamonds in Africa, ah. it, I might be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure it's all like Southern, like South Africa. Um, I think you're right. Yeah. So, I don't know, there probably is mineral mining in Uganda, but they don't even have the tools to get to it. Hmm. Right. So they're they're exporting cotton. They're doing it right. They got Edie, big boy. He just punched the ground. Minerals come out. <laughs> I punch ground. The minerals come out. That, that's go. what he thought. So there, like like I said, there's all this political tension, but overall the tourist industry was pretty good right before Edie comes in. It was booming. In fact, bringing in all types of foreign currency currencies. Now that sure as shit flew out the window as soon as. Amin spent all the country's money on dumb shit like tanks and gold mustard bottles. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, One bottle. The paranoia-driven travel bans destroyed any chance of economic growth, especially in the tourist area. Wow. So he did what any smooth brain butterball would do and printed a bunch of useless money yeah. and kept all the USD for himself. I will keep the USD. In a matter of time where, where people are at least able to make a living and hang in there, yeah, not the richest country in the world, but um, they went from able being able to supply themselves with basics, All they were fine, and now a bar of soap took two weeks to work off. Mm. Oh, that's no good. Well, this was in a matter of six months. I mean, hey, yeah. if you're a country that doesn't have a lot of money... Get tourism, man. I mean, look at all these. There's plenty of tourism, tourist countries like that. Their whole economy is based off of that shit. Like apparently Vietnam's pretty hopping right now. Like you go there, good and there's good food. They do like these like booze cruise tours down like the same river where like GIs were like beheaded, and like people are getting drunk on these party party canoes. Nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that, that was like I said, Uganda had a bit of that. Edie comes in, fucks mm -hmm. it up. Now Uganda, um, Kampala is a pretty cool place to go, from what I understand. Hmm. Huh. Um, Amin saw the money nice. situation wasn't helping him look too good, so he went over to Libya's dictator, Muammar Gaddafi, you guys might know him, uh, yeah. and asked him for a handout. Oh. Gaddafi agreed to help with, his, with some of the bills, as long as Amin agreed to make Uganda officially an Islamic state. <laughs> this is going well. <laughs> What? <laughs> and is Edie like, yeah, sure, I don't care, whatever. It's yeah. done. Yeah, what's that? He was already a practicing Islam Islamist at this point. Well, practicing, you know, right? Um, he he had already from a young age uh, the Dada in his name, Idi Amin Dada. That's actually a Muslim thing. I love how he is friends with Gaddafi, who I feel we haven't roasted him. But he also was this crazy fucking dude that had, like, Charlie's Angels guards and, like, hot tubs and, you know what I mean? Like, he's another oh, one of those, like, contagious. weird, eccentric, like, brutal dictators. Yeah, well, Libya had so much gold. Right. With, I mean, the U.S. did business with him in the 80s. And then all of a sudden he was a bad guy after 9-11. Because that's how our politics work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Obviously, everyone I'm talking about here is a piece of shit. Very low-hanging fruit tonight on Roast Mortem, brought to you by Travis's Good. birthday gift. <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday, Travis! <laughs> no! Woo! Yeah! Oh, I feel so terrible. Thanks for ruining my birthday, Tom! Tom, every, every time you say happy birthday in post, can you just put, like, a little, like, horn? Yes. Like, you know, those sad party <laughs> horns going on. <laughs> yeah. Um... So Amin is now officially anti-Israel and kicked out all 45 Jews in Uganda, claiming that they had been what? plotting to poison the entire Nile. 
all 4,132 miles of the Nile. Yeah. And anyway, it was really only 42 of them? No, but there was like, it was a, <laughs> there might as well have been that many because there right, was yeah, not okay. a lot of them there. <laughs> Uh, but he thought that would make a huge difference. Nothing I'm sure happened. that went over great with Israel. Oh yes. Well now he's now he thinks Israel's out to get him because they didn't train uh, him okay. up. Now he, that's his number one enemy, and they have no idea right. he exists. This guy's crazy. The Israelis left and took very little, but the one thing they did take with them was the blueprint for the Antebe Airport, Uganda's mm. main airport. This is going to come into play later. Okay. The cleverly named newspaper, Arab Week, (laughs) interviewed Edie and said he would lead the Arab army to conquer Israel. Um, There was no official Arab army. He just, he's an idiot. Um, Ah. Just a few months later, the new Ugandan currency hit circulation. Many heads were being scratched upon first sight, seeing an image of Amin on the bill wearing his... Oh, Israeli paratrooper wings on his uniform. Oh! Uh, they, they already, like, signed off on the fucking proof, and it was too late to uh, get a revision <laughs> done in there, right? Yeah. Also, wow, he had this fake pilot wings from there anyway because the Ugandan army actually gave it to him. It was like a replica of the Jewish... of, of the Israeli army, so it wasn't even a real one. And... <laughs> I assure you that he probably just didn't even think of it because this guy loved to dress himself up. He loved to wear all these military medals and reb- ribbons in public. He, he must have made- learned that from the English going to the fancy dress parties. Possibly. But um, he, he would award himself all kinds of awards because he wanted oh, more shit yes. to put on his uniform. Oh, he's a lunatic. I yeah, feel like a lot of space. dictators do that. You know, you see, we talked about we did uh what was it Kim Jong uh, Il, yeah, yeah uh, he's got right, and he's given his like generals like a fucking like vest of like a Boy Scout vest of just a flare, yeah, flare. Yeah, you feel special, and, and it's Mussolini like your pants, yeah, Mussolini did the same thing. He was just covered in all this metal. Yeah, I mean these guys want to look like Christmas trees, and yeah. Mussolini, like, at least he had to go to Germany to talk to Hitler one time. Like, the Kim Jong-il, like, he didn't leave his country. Idi Amin, after these two trips, he didn't leave his country. He didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. At all. He couldn't even pretend. (laughs) So, um, anyway, he he declared himself all this dumb shit. Right. Um, His Excellency, President for Life. yes. Field Marshal <laughs> Al Haji Doctor Edi Amam Dada was president oh, for life. Was president for life with a four in there? Like president <laughs> for life. It, it may has may have well has been. I mean, if yeah, he I'm, was up to writing the the transcription, then it probably would have been. <laughs> and life was with a Y. You know, what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Lord of all beasts. Of the earth Uh-oh. and fishes of the seas, and conqueror of British Empire in Africa in general, and Uganda in particular. <laughs> That's one, one title. <laughs> this is World like of Warcraft. It. It's good. Uh, Jesus and I Christ. love that. And Uganda in particular, not just all of Africa, but I really did it well. I did the best in Uganda. The best is where you could really see me shine. That's where I was the peel of Africa. <laughs> the peel. So the best uh, accolade that people know him as is the King of Scotland. The Scotland. That's cold, <laughs> wet, red hair, pasty. Oh, ready? Oh, blah, 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 blah. They make pugs. They make yeah. pugs salute Hitler up there. Well, <laughs> the last and... King of Scotland. That movie is based off this title that he gave himself. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't come from nowhere. Uh, he hated England so much after they didn't sell him weapons. And he didn't really understand much about borders or how government worked. He he thought that if he claimed that Scotland was independent of British rule and put himself in the position of king, and it wasn't challenged, it was true. Oh. Uh, I like, like his, this. the way this guy thinks sometimes. Yeah. Uh, this is some if, Highlander if it's true shit. in your head, it's got to be true, you know? Who cares what everyone else is thinking? As long right. as I think it's true, then it's true. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's straight up Highlander. Like you had to kill the like eternal beast man's soul with the Highlander <laughs> in order to <laughs> claim the throne. Yeah, it's just um, 
like people like this, you can't really convince otherwise. So we just gotta move along. <laughs> I mean, under that, I could be like, guess what? I'm the king of shrimp. Hmm. Prove me wrong. It's not contested. I'm contesting it, so I'm the king of shrimp, Travis. So fuck Shut you. Shut up, man. asshole! I'm gonna fucking have to kill you, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna kill. I'm a bigger boy than you. I'm a big boy. Oh, Travis, smash! Over. Travis is gonna run you over with a tank now. I'm gonna roll I'm you okay, over Travis. my Ford Fiesta. <laughs> like to see you try, Travis. Dude, I know you can kick flip high, but can you kick flip over a Ford Fiesta? It's got some. We'll it's see. got some height to it. We'll see. All right. Oh, shit. We'll have a oh, duel for fuck. the King of Shrimp. All right, we'll have to meet in like Minnesota. You, me, <laughs> you skate there. I'll drive my Ford Fiesta tank. I got the time now. So, right. <laughs> see you there. This is gonna be a good episode. Yeah. King of Shrimp, King of Shrimp for life, right here. By the way, in particular, King of Shrimp, West Coast King of Shrimp, King of shrimp. East Coast, East Coast King, of shrimp. King of Shrimp, Shrimp Tempura. Which coast will win now? All right, Dude, I'm totally, let's move I'm along. totally Tupac. I win. All right, moving on. <laughs> so Edie really amped up his anti-Semitism to show his new friend Gaddafi that he was super into Islam. Yeah. He even made plans to erect a statue of Adolf Hitler in Kampala. <laughs> oh my God! Really? Wait, because yeah. of Ballsy. Islam? Well, at, for anti-Semitism. Yeah, because he doesn't understand anything. The Muslims don't like Jews. Hitler was a Muslim then, because he really exactly. didn't like Jews. Yeah, guess Perfect. what? He hated yeah, he Africa too. You know, he's cherry picking the parts. Just like, oh, Jews. Yeah. yeah, everyone should hate those fuckers. Wait, he made a statue of Hitler, or he like proposed to get one? The area was selected to put it, and then it never actually got finished. Because Jeez. he's Hitler. Yeah, and he also started running out of money. But there were official plans put in. Well, dude, how funny would that be if that actually, like, coming from Jewish heritage, I would kind of find that funny to just see a giant statue of Hitler in the middle of Uganda. <laughs> yeah, like, that'd yeah. be fucking weird. It's, it's too <laughs> bizarre to get mad at. <laughs> It's yeah, pretty that's... dumb. <laughs> but it's here. I thought you were going to say, like, in order to prove that he was so Muslim, he was like, he drew a giant statue of uh, of Allah or Muhammad in, like, the times. They're like, look, see how well I drew him? He's fucking yeah. great, guys. I'm the best Muslim ever. That one might backfire. <laughs> oh, check out my new uh, picture of Muhammad. I didn't read the it's book, the... but I heard he's a great guy. <laughs> I don't know putting all the rules, on, but I get the gist. Put, putting it on all the billboards. <laughs> anyway, uh, I oh, even th- like I'm I'm pretty sure Gaddafi, who did hate Jews, thought this was even a bit try hard. <laughs> um, when Palestinian terrorists massacred the entire Israeli Olympic team in Munich, yeah. Amin sent a letter to the UN saying the following. Now that's a true story. I didn't know this happened. Fucking crazy. This is There's this a movie is in the seventies. Yeah, called Munich. Yeah, it like in fucking Munich, and all of a sudden you got the whole Israeli Olympic team is slaughtered. Like I didn't even know that happened. That's nuts. Really? Yeah, modern history. That what was their sport? The entire team. Oh, like every yeah, participating. They, it, it was in the airport, right, or something. I I, I think so. Uh, it was either that or in the hotel. hotel. Yeah, uh, I thought it was the hotel. I can be wrong. Yeah, you're right. It's a hotel. Yeah. So anyway, um, oh! I'm in sent this letter. We're talking about some fun stuff today, guys. Happy Thanks. Happy birthday. birthday. Thanks for hanging out with me. Travis? I'm already socially isolated. Uh, <laughs> thanks for hanging out with me, my friends. Thanks. I, I, you, you don't need Travis. good dreams tonight. I'm taking this opportunity to f- firstly wish you a happy birthday, Travis. Yeah. And secondly, I just <laughs> want to remind everyone who's stuck in their house that it could be a lot worse. You could be stuck in your house in Uganda in 1973. Uh, that's true. Yeah, it's true. There could just be a tank in your living room just revving up. <laughs> yeah. Like, what's this about? <laughs> now, Let it be a surprise. I, I know this is terrible, but the wording is hilarious. So let me read this letter that he wrote to the UN. Do it. Hitler and all German people knew that the Israelis were not people who are working in the interest of the people of the world, and that is why they burned over six million Jews alive. The world should remember that Palestinians, with the assistance of Germany, made the operation possible in the Olympic Village. Cool. Oh my god, the there's so much wrong with this. Oh, this guy even gets news somehow. He even finds out about this stuff. Yeah, if... 
That was 140 characters. I would mistake that as like a, a tweet today. Mm, yeah, yeah. Imagine, a, imagine a world leader using Twitter and getting his spelling wrong. It's weird. Kofefe. <laughs> like that first fucking line, Hitler and all German people knew that Israelis are not people who are working in the interests of the people of the world, and that's why they burned six million Jews. Like, what the fuck? That reminds me of that like kid who's like, have you ever had a dream where you where you thought you could, where, where, when you could, you, you, had a, yeah. you had a thought that you, maybe you could, and then you could do anything? Like, <laughs> I had one of those dreams. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Edie... What? E- Edie, baby, Bobby, uh, guess what? Uh, Israel Bobby. wasn't a country back then. Oh, you dummy. Oh, far. oh, well, before the Holocaust. Right, right. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm in needed more scapegoats right about now. He got all he got rid of all the Israelis and the Bugandan tribe people who, yeah, you know, they had been hacked to bits. And yet the Ugandan economy was still trash. How? So Weird. many plans. <laughs> so the next logical choice on the old uh, reverse racism, or rather just uh, black guy being really racist, was to get rid of the Asians. Oh, oh no. Get them out. Yeah. Get out of here. Why? They're always squinting at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. On, on the serious note. So the Asian population in Uganda had been brought over as slaves or indentured laborers by the British during their occupation. (laughs) Come here, get out. (laughs) But they were mostly Indian folks, and they had generally excelled in the business world. Think about it. Most Ugandans still had this tribe mentality and were not really the kind of people to own businesses on paper. The Indian folks, however, had adopted the Western business sense from the British masters, and became right. a major part of Ugandan commerce. Okay. So even though the population wasn't that big, they had they were in control of about a third of the Ugandan money. Yeah, okay. and also uh, India wasn't as tribe even before the British Empire. India wasn't as tribe. It was a breakup of different empires. Like there was multiple empires in India, right? right. But it wasn't as tribal as like Africa is, where it's like. This small village is our gr- like uh, like Edie bringing up his like villagers uh, that make pots to become you know chief generals. Right. Like, India was more of like one massive empire. Like they understand like money moves and there's tra- right. It's more akin with the Western to Western world. structures of political. Systems. Yeah, for centuries. Yeah. yeah. Keep this in mind. When this happens, we're only seven months into his regime. Nice. Mm. So uh, get Pro-active. a lot of shit done. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. He's fucking up he's as hustling. many ways as possible as soon as possible. He's doing something, you know. <laughs> he's doing something. <laughs> Mike, that's the smoothest thing <laughs> I've ever heard. The man's at least running fuckers over with tanks and chopping yeah. off penises. What's our president done? <laughs> Mike, you, you should run for local government. Mike Regan yeah, doing dude. something. <laughs> I'd fraudulently vote for you. Idiot yeah. meme sitting at home going, no, you can't take that away from me. No, you can't take that away. <laughs> All right, buddy. August 5th, 1971. He makes a radio announcement telling all Asians they had 90 days to leave the country or else be executed. Wow. For every day of these 90 days, he would tune into the radio and do a hey little, hello, everybody. It is ED. You got 89 days left. Goodbye. Wow. <laughs> but Amazing he made a whole spectacle of it. I didn't know Edie was from Brooklyn. Yeah. And then he would play the final countdown after he said that. Yeah, radio. that's a good sign off. <laughs> so they were only allowed to leave with the clothes on their back and the money they could carry with them. Everything else had to stay. That was the law. No, and while they okay. were getting out, they were treated pretty terribly. Uh, a lot of rapes, a lot of brutalizing, a few murders, just just forcing these people onto planes. All the Asians' property was acquired by the state and then given to a means fellow tribesmen. Now, okay. people who have maybe seen five cars in their lifetime now owned mechanic shops. Cool. The idea of qualifications was just not even a topic of conversation. People who had never been in a retail store were now managers in retail stores, thinking that the size label on the collar of expensive dress shirts was now the price. <laughs> oh, big boys, pay more. 
as you can tell, this didn't go well. He tried to do something yeah. nice. Ah, oh, give it back to the Ugandan people. Guess what? Ugandan people, they're not exactly ones to work at Macy's, especially if they've been just milking cows their whole life. They have their own <laughs> lifestyle. Leave them alone. Yeah, mm. it's true. Uh, so then he did the same thing with the Britons who were still living there. Any Brit found in Uganda after the expulsion date would be considered a spy and tried as such. Oh, because they gotta, you know, they're they gotta write home in their spy fashion, be like, yeah, Idi Amin is just a fucking mean jerk. Idi Amin does not have crumpets on a Tuesday. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Savage. So. So though a lot of Ugandans saw how fucked up this was, he had successfully purchased enough loyalty to not be questioned by his immediate officers. And his immediate <laughs> officers were his immediate family, right? <laughs> well, they were they were family, and then just people who um, just said they agreed with him all the time. <laughs> you think he always you know. kept the tank running? Yeah. What's up? Just constantly on. You think you think he kept the tank running, like constantly on, just in just case to anyone run got fuckers out of line. over. Yeah. <laughs> keep the fear going. <laughs> yeah, probably. Why not? I mean, you gotta you gotta keep people in line. You see, this so, this is the tank. <laughs> so he gave his top officers, or as he liked to call them, the State Research Bureau, uh, all the nice shit they wanted, like bicycles and Capri Suns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's that's pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, but One with nice the thing he's done. But with the removals of the Indians and English not working out the way he planned, the money started drying up. And Amin Uh gave his loyal murder squad a license to kill to pay themselves. What now? What? So his entire army was allowed to kill any Ugandan citizen for their land or assets. Oh, that's smart. That's a new one. On top of which, Ugandans would pay all the money they had just to have the remains of their loved ones returned to them. How much oh money? God. All of it. All of it. All so of it. this practice was actually called body finders. Now, before this got really bad, there was a lot of killings. Well, when I say really bad, before it was bad and before it got just awful, <laughs> he was killing people left and right and just leaving them in the bush or in the river. And uh, at this time in Uganda, you can walk along the Nile and just find a body. Really? Ooh. So it's like a bounty hunter, but they're not moving that you're looking for. Right. So people would (laughs) look for dead bodies, return them to the family, and get a reward for doing so. But now the State Research Bureau was making the bodies and then returning them to the family and expecting them to pay. Oh. We killed them. So they were rarely quick deaths. I mean, love to torture and encourage his officers to kill as slowly as possible. Happy birthday, Travis. Yeah. Ah! What's with that? Uh, why, why does he make him torture? That? Like, that's like so fucked up. He, he's mentally Wait, ill. He's fucked. He's yeah, fucked obviously, up. Obviously, he told. There's a, you don't reason with this kind of shit, Mike. You know, he's yeah. doing fucked up things because he's fucked up. He's almost yeah. as fucked up as the person that when you at the Taco Bell that purposefully leaves out the quesadilla every time oh, I go I there. That person. That's almost as fucked that up as me that too. So I guess what? One fucking thing. You guy at Taco Bell that leaves him a quesadilla all the time, you're like Idi Amin. That's a great way but to start worse. off the year. Yeah. Comparing <laughs> genocidalists to forgetful Mexican people. <laughs> hey, the every time! I check the bag after I leave the parking lot out every time! Don't pull away as you're done. We'll see how that one holds up, Travis. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, people of Kampala knew when Amin had a particularly high body count that week. Here's how. The state would toss unclaimed bodies into the river, where 40 miles downstream there was a hydroelectric dam at Owens oh. Fall. The dam, was pow- the dam powered Kampala, and when too many bodies got jammed into the dam, the power of the city would go out. Wow. Oh <laughs> Some fucking public employee, like public servant who's got to go in there and just clear the body jam. Um. That's a shitty job. Like, scrape the filter. Mike Rose, dirty jobs! You got yeah, it, Mike Rose. <laughs> yeah, right. This actually brought an influx of crocodiles. Because it was just easy pickings, there just was a lot more of them all of a sudden. And even they couldn't eat all the bodies. Wow. Ah. So, it's a scary place to live. Jeez. This is hell. This is what a hell looks like. Yeah. Yeah. God. So Amin tried to keep up appearances with international audiences. 
when the staff of the French embassy complained about the constant overnight gunfire and executions <laughs> just down the road from the research bureau headquarters. Keep it down. <laughs> Amin came up with a way to do more silent but somehow more brutal killings. He moved it straight into the holding cells. He would tell new prisoners that he that they would be spared if they killed their new cellmate with the sledgehammer. Outsourcing. Oh, oh. Yeah. Wait, he's turning uh, this shit into a Saw episode. What the fuck? Yeah, right? Yeah. Saw movie. Uh, so those who refused were bayoneted to death, and those who complied were left for the next new prisoner to come kill them with the hammer. The regime never kept their promise. It's hammer like death sucks. Oh. This penis. It's, it's this man's stuff. a penis. This is a stupid penis, man. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, he's got the sicko. Thanks, Tom. He's a big boy. I, I, I turn on. I get together with my friends every week to have at least a little ha ha, little ha ha. Look at this idiot. He's got a big head. Oh my god! Look at how big his head is. <laughs> and now we're talking about fucking bayoneting, sledgehammering innocent people in cells. I don't like it. I don't like one bit. Yeah, Happy birthday, Travis. Hey, the people hey. that got bayoneted didn't like it either. No. Yeah. And he was no charmer in the household either. In 1974, Itty, or Big Daddy, as he liked to be yeah. called in the house, <laughs> yeah. divorced oh, yeah. three of his four wives for meddling in his affairs. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention, he That's had a lot do. of wives. Yeah. Mm. Uh, he also had 54 kids. 54? Oof. Wow. I don't know to remember. So one of his wives, Kay, had died from a botched abortion. I'm in believe that Kay was an evil woman for this abortion and wanted his other wife, Sarah, to see what evil people really look like. So he gave the people at the morgue special orders to mutilate Kay's body, then brought yep. Sarah the to fuck? see it. He had all of her limbs removed, as well as the head, and then sewn mm -hmm. back on all wrong. Her head was put on backwards, and the limbs were swapped, arms for legs, legs for arms. There is a scene in The Last King of Scotland that yeah, depicts yeah. just that. Yeah. yeah. What sicko's making that? Someone who doesn't want to get killed. Yeah, yeah right? Guy who's really threatened. Spread, like, oh, this fuck. God. It'll, it sounds fucked up, but I would do that if it meant staying alive. That's true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, she's already dead. Yeah, survive. She's yeah. already dead. You're not making I, I, the choice, and it's not like it's not like you could just quit the job, you know? That's You're, another shitty job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Micro. So he kept this as a trophy around for a while um what the fuck is wrong with him <laughs> once again here's a reminder that this is not medieval times or anything this is the year that david lee roth joined van halen cool. this is modern history i love one, this one's I love that more tragic there. yeah one's more tragic than the other by like do you think they had that a thing? landslide dude I, they definitely didn't have van halen but the point is like <laughs> we have listeners of the show who were born before this happened yeah, like this is yep. very recent. It's crazy shit, that this was man. going on, and because this country didn't have oil or anything for the U.S., we didn't do anything about it. I don't know. Not that I'm exactly a world police guy, but this is really fucking bad. If you're gonna police the yeah, world, you might as well uh, go after p these people. Yeah, low hanging fruit. Just mm -hmm. tell them to stop. They're clearly doing the bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. So there's also alleged claims of Edie being a cannibal. Yeah. I don't know if they're true, but he definitely liked attention. So he would say things in interviews about flesh being too salty for his taste. I don't think he did that. I think he's just a sick guy who was looking for attention. Like also, Ozzy Osbourne eating a bat? Just like that. It's the same it thing, kinda really. ups you, it, it, it ups your intimidation factor. You know what I mean? Like some middle management lumberg -like type boss is going to be listened to way more. If he drops, like, yeah, human flesh is a little too salty for my like, You know what I mean? I feel like it's one of those plays. All right, Chaz. Like, you know what that tastes like. <laughs> Shock value. Ah, ah, ah. Let's talk about Edie's biggest embarrassment. And what? what? <laughs> His country that he made? A little more attention. Yeah. Okay. Uh, on the okay. international stage. Okay. Oh. June 28th. 1976, toward the ends of Edie's shitty regime, mm -hmm. a French airliner flying from Tel Aviv to Paris, carrying 300 people, mostly Jewish, was hijacked by some stupid Palestinian terrorists. Mm -hmm. okay. Edie told the terrorists via air control that they could land at Entebbe Airport because he hates oh. Jews. He's like, yeah, safe haven. Come on over here. Are you trying to figure out where to land at? I got you, dogs. <sighs> this was the first time 
Edie was truly on the international stage. Um, the terrorists began making their demands while Edie went on TV and doing some radio talkings, talking shit about Jews and how these terrorists were upright citizens and he supported all their actions. There was also footage that reached the BBC of Idi Amin berating all the, the hostages. So instantly, really? there's, yeah, I was like, okay, this guy's kind of a dick. He's not the <laughs> nicest guy. Yeah. Mm. You're a fucking asshole. All the non-Israeli air- airport carriers were permitted to take flights out of Uganda. The 83 Israeli citizens and 20 more who refused to abandon them stayed in Uganda. Negotiations lasted long enough for Israeli forces to find the blueprints taken of Entebbe Airport, as they were the right. ones who built it. <laughs> ah. Remember how I mentioned yeah. that before? You took them all yeah. out and they had the plans? That was some yeah. good foreshadowing, because you basically told us, Remem- yeah. remember this part! I wish I more movies I... were like that. You know, they do the foreshadowing <laughs> part. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Remember this part. No, no, no. It's a hard cut of Travis <laughs> saying that, and then it immediately goes back into the scene. I was thinking just big, like, bold Comic Sans uh, yellow font. <laughs> oh, no. Popping up on screen, flashing. Remember this part. <laughs> I think I've seen that in an M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> there was the wind the whole time. Remember? Remember that? (laughs) So between this information and the fact that Israel had a real army and not a bunch of Uh, basket weavers and cattle hands with machine guns, they were able to pull off an embarrassing rescue operation for the whole world to see. The fear that Edie was trying to invoke in the international spotlight now just looked like top-notch buffoonery. Yeah. Just go in and get them. All but three hostages lived, one Israeli soldier died, and 45 of... Edie's top men were killed. Ah. Who's that coming? Because yeah. of the jar making background. That's straight up like some dirty dozen shit. Yeah, that's yeah. when you when you when you put potters up against Krav Magav specialists that like yeah you know have they've they were able to like form knives out of like their own shin bones that they were required yeah, to carve off of their body. They could fucking crush your testicles with their eyelids, probably. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So we will, every, day, embar- every day, we, as an Israeli special force, we wake up and do the amount of push-ups as all the Jews lost in the Holocaust. And that's before breakfast. Th- that's more than, <laughs> like, 12. Uh-oh. <laughs> that's a lot more. One more embarrassing part about this whole ordeal was an elderly lady named Dora Block. She's one of the hostages, and she had to be taken to the Ugandan hospital during the whole operation, leaving Mm -hmm. her behind when the the rescue happened. Oh, no. Oh, fuck. Now, the British High Commissioner, Peter Shandley, had already negotiated her release before the rescue operation even happened. Right. Now, after the operation, Itty had been furious that he was stymied. He didn't oh, want no. to be stymie. Who wants to be stymie? Wants to be stymie. <laughs> no one wants to be stymie. So Edie ordered that she be dragged out of her hospital bed, executed, and left in a field outside of Kampala. She's mm. an old Sucks woman? Lady. This is an old woman. Uh, this is a woman in Jewish her 70s. Woman. When Shanley asked to see her, Edie told him that she was with the other passengers who were already rescued. Therefore, on the plane, on her way home already. I don't know what you're talking about. Shanley left the office without saying any, anything, but knew that that was false because he had talked to her after the rescue mission had even happened. Uh-oh. What an idiot. So Shanley reports and goes, hey, you can't trust anything this guy says. No. He, said- he is now on the world shit list. Mm. <laughs> Amin couldn't take a hint and double down on slaughtering people, especially the few remaining Christians in Uganda. To mm. the world, he seemed like an evil clown that couldn't even tie his shoes, let alone uh, put together a terrorist negotiation. I mean, they're big shoes. Yeah, size 14s. 14. 14. 14. Yeah. But to the people of Uganda, they were pretty much ready to give up hope. It was getting that bad. The yeah. whole genocide. Sounds thing. terrible. Yeah. Sounds like a terrible place to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Mike. <laughs> but luckily for them, the army was getting pretty sick of his shit. So, in April 1979, in an attempt to reunite the army under his leadership, he made an announcement that Tanzania, the country just below Uganda, was getting ready to invade them. 
This was not true, as nobody, including Tanzania, give a shit about Uganda. (laughs) What do they got? Fake fake news. As some of Edie's men began advancing into Tanzania, the Tanzanian president, Julius Nyrir, was all like, what are you guys doing here? (laughs) Hey, hey buddy. Hey, buddy, what are you doing? Why are you you guys walking on my lawn? There's a zebra there. Go back. (laughs) So... He destroyed all of Edie's men and then pressed into Uganda with his own, now creating the invasion. Uh, okay. And he was greeted kindly by the people of Kampala, who were like, ah, oh, help. Get Visitors. rid of this shitty president, please. This guy's a fucking <laughs> asshole. This guy's crazy. I feel Not like that's most tank. when most true crime podcasts find our podcast. We're like, oh, yeah, we'll bring you in. Oh, Don't yeah. worry. Don't worry. You've been listening to we'll, Ed. We'll fix you. Yeah, listen to a series. Don't worry, we'll give you actual information. Yeah, well, you've been listening to a series mm. about what Ed Gein's fucking ball sack looked like for seven episodes. Don't worry. We'll give you something fresh every week. It's true. We only do two parters every now and then, and those are really prime assholes. Yeah. Well, in a futile attempt, Edie asked his boys to rally just one more time. But oops, <laughs> nobody showed up. I wonder fucking why. <laughs> You know who didn't show up? Edie. Who? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. He put his ass on a plane to Libya. That's where Libya. Gaddafi Uganda was there. behind him forever. What's that? Gaddafi. What's he, going, what's he doing in Libya? Yeah, he's going to go hang out with his buddy Gaddafi. Gaddafi oh. took care of Edie and ra- helped raise about 40 of his children for the next 10 <laughs> years. <laughs> oh, shit. Cuck. I mean, he had like 57, right? Or something like that. He had that 54, too? but a lot of them were old enough to, you know, oh, okay. start do doing other shit. Thing. Yeah. All right. No, that guy has as many children as a deck of cards with jokers. I yeah. was going to say... I, it's a lot of annoying kids. If I had that many children, I'd have them learn like a different instrument each. So I could be like, here's the Travis Lee Orchestra. It's all my baby boys and baby girls. And I'd be like, I'd be like Travis Seven, Travis Seven on the flute right there. And he'd be like... Yeah, I'd put them all into like some kind of flesh-powered Rube Goldberg machine. <laughs> so there'd just be a bunch of dominoes, and that would poke one of my sons in the elbow, and he would like shove like a pendulum over, and then a daughter would like get hit in the face with that and lose her baby teeth, which would like tip the weight of a scale, and so on and so forth. And trigger the microwave to start heating up hot pockets for all fifty-seven of them. No, just me. <laughs> I, I'm the only one. That so gets I think hot that's pockets. where our minds uh, are at, Cody. You're like, I want hot pockets, and I'm like, I want to make basically the Jackson Five, the Jackson Fifty Four. <laughs> I'm saying, and like, they're gonna play Stravinsky and shit. Well, that's cool. That's child labor, Travis. No, don't worry about it. not child labor. They are my children. If it's your children, it's not. There's it's not Travis's. child labor. Like when my dad had me rip up all the ivy, and I was getting paid under minimum wage. In my backyard, that's not child nope. labor. That's having no, children. That's Travis labor. That's children. Yeah, that's, that's what they're true. there for. They're supposed to be farm hands. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, in 1981, a movie came out called Amin: Rise and Fall, accurately depicting Amin's brutality. Oh, cool. Amin did see the film and telegraphed the director, telling him that he thought it was great. Amin didn't Jeez. think anything he ever did was wrong, which is no real surprise. Yeah, uh, he liked the publicity, so he's like, "Oh, great! They made a movie about me." This is true. Boosting his ego even more. One day they Jeez. will make a movie where Forrest Whitaker is me. Travis, happy birthday! Ask me how he did it. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, when did he have his backwards birthday? Wow. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. Uh, after ten uh, years of chilling with Gaddafi, he moved to Saudi Arabia, where he lived the rest of his days. I'm just saying, hold on, hold on. I'm just saying, Saudi Arabia are allies. Great people there. Saudi Arabia? Oh, woo! really? I was going with the opposite on this script. Uh, Well, you know, Saudi Arabia, they have, um, it's like water, but it's like thicker and black. <laughs> and therefore, they're just like, that's a complete democracy run by a king. Yeah, absolutely. Prince. The king allowed Amin to stay there and gave him a decent allowance on one stipulation that he lay low and never attempt to participate in any kind of politics ever again. <laughs> now, really? Wow. When a Saudi king tells an evil dictator to stay out of politics, 
You know that that dictator is yeah. pretty cut rate. <laughs> You're fucking up. Saudi kings and princes are fucking terrible fuckwads. Uh, just a little fact. There are 15,000 members of the Saudi royal family, and they are all wow. trash. Fact. Yeah, one wow. of them just beached wow. a yacht the other day, and like, <laughs> there people are like, oh, did he just execute really? his crew? <laughs> Probably. Probably. Yeah. It, it feels like just, like, life of a Saudi uh, royal family member is literally just GTA. Yeah. It's just Basically. Grand Theft Auto, I'm going to beach this yacht and kill everyone who... Uh, Look not at it. not to, not to derail it yeah. too much into the Saudi princes because like I'm sure we could probably find one Saudi prince that leaves roast, but I saw something where they they were sent to jail, and their jail was like a X hotel that was like X like five star best hotel in the world, and like they were fed lobster dinners, and like all they had to do was just hang out in this hotel, they could drink, do whatever they wanted, they just couldn't leave this hotel. And like people were trying to escape. Mm-hmm. Like there's a place where you could go for like a week, like a, a night costs like five G. You know? Yeah. Or they gotta drive the Lamborghinis and shit like that. You know? Can't be cooked inside all day. Saudi princes are basically the Angelicas of Rugrats <laughs> for the <laughs> world. Good. Yeah. I like that. And terrible Cynthia people. Is their I hope oil. I, I honestly hope one of them hears this and then comes crashes uh, comes and crashes a Lamborghini into my my front porch. You just that's about equal as amount of chance that Billy Joel will do that too. Yeah, wow, that's up there too. Allegedly, allegedly, it's too close to true, so you have to say allegedly. <laughs> mm-hmm. In Minecraft, allegedly. So anyway, on August sixteenth, two thousand three, in King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center, Idi Amin died. He oh. had kidney issues and had been in a coma for over a month. A month. Uh, wow. So, dude's dead. Suck on that shit. Happy birthday. Wow. How old was that he? That sucks. He lived like a long life, kind of, basically. Uh, I kind think of was basically. 71. Well, we don't know exactly how old he was anyway. Because it is his, true. Mm, yeah. He, he, it was like was, uh, 1923 to 1928 is like when he claimed to be born. Well, yeah. fuck this guy. Thanks for making me feel great on my birthday, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday, Travis. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Today's your birthday. birthday! Man, I really liked when all those people died on my birthday. Also, no, you don't need to make me feel b- bad about myself on my birthday. Yeah, I, it's already yes, the anniversary of Waco, so you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, this is Way the cherry. Go, yeah. Day before Hitler's birthday. What? I have a question. Did he ever, like, did anyone in Scotland, was it, were they ever like, yo, you're not the king? I don't think anyone knew who he was. Oh, okay. Yeah, dude. Mike, did you know who he was? No, I didn't know who he was. All right, so at least a quarter of people don't know who he is. (laughs) Yeah. Cody, did you know who he was? Uh, As soon as you said he was the last King of Scotland guy, yeah. All right, but if I just said Idi Amin... No. Yeah, Cody knows... so there you go. Cody knows he's far as Whitaker. Half of the people didn't know who he was. And to be honest with you, I had heard of him... But I didn't know he was this much of a cocksucker. Uh, yeah. Yes, you you went into more detail than the Last King of Scotland movie. And it sucks that he lives like a fucking. He just like wrote it out too. He didn't get like fucking justice, kind of. You know. Yeah. Like real psychos don't get justice anyway, because like you throw a, mm. a psycho into jail for killing people, they're just reveling it in it, in it anyway. I don't know. I feel yeah, like uh, Nguama got our other African dictator that I did. He got justice. They hung his ass, I think, or they shot him. I can't remember. I think they shot him. Yeah, they shot him. Like firing dead, squad. Though, wow. So Jeez. this mo- this Santa motherfucker's Claus. hanging out in in fucking uh, what's that plate? That big one? Libya. Abu Dhabi? Libya. No, not Abu Dhabi. Saudi Arabia. He's like going like indoor skydiving. They have like the biggest mall in the world. <laughs> It also <laughs> looks like what yeah. Discovery Zone was trying to be. Yeah, Dubai is what Discovery Zone was trying to be, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. All right, well, that's yeah. it. That's that's all we got for Idiot Amin. Yeah. Oh, that guy. Thanks for tuning in to Roast Mortem. Give us money on Ooh. Patreon. Follow us on social medias. Buy our shit. Yeah. And wish Travis a happy birthday. I mean, it's it's weeks over happy by the time birthday, they're listening Travis. to it. Yeah, send them one anyway. Yeah, that's right. I'm a baby boy. Happy birthday, Travis. Belated. You know that I was born thing. in 1972 underneath. That's not true. 
And when I say born in 1972, that was the year that I actually got a driver's license. But I was born in six. I'm gonna tune out. I was out born in doing 16, this. He can keep going though. I was born in 1642 to a vampire boy named Child Boy Millionaire, and he had, used to suck the uh-huh. blood out of shrimps. And then <laughs> my mother was born in 1123. She was a mean lady. She had legs. What did you say, Travis? Yeah, what? No! <laughs> There's important things about my history. Important things. Uh, well, that's it then. Yay, bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you, Shane. Shane. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Shane. Peace. Peace.